Calculating emissions, a warm-up session. Once the activity data and emission factors have been collected, emissions can be calculated using a straightforward three-step formula. The first step is simply multiplying the activity data by the emission factor, which gives you the greenhouse gas emissions from a given source. The second step is multiplying the GHG emissions by the relevant global warming potential to convert to carbon dioxide equivalents. Of course, this step is only necessary when dealing with gases other than carbon dioxide. The final step is converting the emissions to the desired unit. The standard unit for expressing greenhouse gas emissions is metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents. Though, depending on the program and reporting purposes, GHG emissions can be expressed in a number of different formats. Example 1. Let's take a look at a, sample, a simple example involving automobile travel. Over the course of a year, a Honda Civic traveled 30,000 miles and averaged 30 miles per gallon. Using the published reference value maintained by the US EPA, the emission factor for gasoline is 19.37 pounds of CO2 per gallon. Based on this information, how much CO2 is emitted? In this example, the activity data is the distance traveled and the vehicle's fuel efficiency. But the ultimate piece of information needed is the gallons of gasoline consumed. We can calculate this by dividing the distance traveled by the fuel efficiency of the vehicle. So, 30,000 miles divided by 30 miles per gallon equals 1,000 gallons of gasoline. Now that we know the amount of gasoline consumed, we simply multiply this by our emission factor. 1,000 gallons of gasoline times 19.37 pounds of CO2 per gallon gives us 19,370 pounds of CO2. Since we're dealing with CO2, we don't need to multiply by the global warming potential because the global warming potential for CO2 is 1. The final step is converting this figure into metric tons of carbon dioxide. Now, we know that a metric ton has 2,204.6 pounds, so all we need to do is divide the number of pounds by 2204.6. 19,370 pounds divided by 2204.6 equals 8.7 metric tons of CO2. So, the Honda Civic that traveled 30,000 miles over the course of a year resulted in 8.79 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions. Example 2. Let's take a look at another example, this time from an energy efficiency project. Today, many companies are replacing their lighting fixtures with newer, more efficient lighting to save money and reduce their impact on the environment. In this example, a factory replaced 5,000 60-watt incandescent bulbs with 15-watt compact fluorescents. The light bulbs are used 8 hours per day, 365 days a year, and the factory purchased electricity from a utility with an emission factor of 1,500 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour. In this scenario, how many metric tons of carbon dioxide are avoided by the CFLs each year? Here we are trying to calculate the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions resulting from the lighting improvements. We know the emission factor is 1500 pounds per megawatt hour, so we need to determine how much less electricity the new lights will consume over the course of one year. In order to calculate this, we first need to look at the difference in electricity consumption. The incandescent bulbs consume 50, uh, 60 watts each, excuse me, whereas the compact fluorescents consume 15 watts each. So the fluorescent bulbs consume 45 watts less. It is this differential we will be focusing on. To determine savings from the new bulbs, we must multiply the energy savings from each individual bulb by the number of bulbs replaced, by the number of hours in operation each year. 
This will give us the total amount of electricity saved each year. So, let's do the math. 5,000 bulbs times 45 watts saved times 8 hours a day times 365 days per year gives us 657 million watt hour. Now that we have calculated the annual electricity savings, the next step is to multiply the result by the emission factor to calculate the greenhouse gas savings. But in this case, the emission factor is expressed in pounds of CO2 per megawatt, and the savings are expressed in watt hours. Before we can make the calculation, either the activity data or the emission factor must be converted. In this example, we're going to convert the activity data from watt hour to megawatt hour. One megawatt hour is equal to one million watt hours, so all we need to do is divide the watt hours by one million to arrive at megawatt hours. Here we go. 657 million watt hours divided by one million gives us 657 megawatt hours. Now that we have the activity data and the emission factor expressed in the same units, we can calculate the greenhouse gas savings from the lighting improvement. 657 megawatt hour times 1500 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour gives us 985,500 pounds of CO2. Once again, since these are CO2 emissions, we do not need to multiply by the global warming potential. The final step is to divide our pounds of CO2 by 2204.6 to convert the greenhouse gas savings to metric tons. This tells us that the lighting improvements will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 447 metric tons each year. The next few videos We'll walk you through a number of scenarios of increasing complexity. Follow them along with your handout and soon you'll get the hang of calculating greenhouse gas emissions.